What's going on, everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you my five favorite bosses from Elden Ring. Now, Elden Ring is an amazing title, honestly, filled with memorable boss encounters. And after a review and a few other videos about the game, people have asked me what some of my favorite bosses are, which is naturally why we're here. Now, I would say the bosses on this list aren't necessarily the coolest by any means. They're mostly just the ones that stood out to me as unique, which is why I'm so fond of them. Jumping straight into things with honestly the most boring choice on the list, with none other than Margit, the Fell Omen. So this is likely the first major boss you'll encounter, and as such, he kind of sets the stage for how the game is going to be played, because on one hand, you can bash your head against a wall fighting this guy for a couple hours when you first meet him, like I did, just to prove a point to myself, I suppose. Or you can go level, come back, and one-shot the guy at like level 100, like you can see here and there in social media posts. And I think that is a sort of small-scale version of what Elden Ring really boils down to in a lot of ways. Do you embrace the challenge, or do you cheese the mechanics and the exploration to make a mockery of these bosses? And in that way, I respect Margit for bearing the brunt of that abuse. Now, second on the list is actually the Ancestor Spirit. Now, this actually also applies to the Royal Ancestor Spirit, as it is essentially the same boss. But I like the Ancestor Spirit because it is just such a chill boss fight, which for a game like this is kind of odd, honestly. But you'll find this boss as an optional encounter in an underground river area of the game, along with its counterpart, the Royal Ancestor Spirit. The difference being that the Royal one is just stronger but essentially the fight is largely the same. But again, what really stood out to me about this fight is just how much calmer and almost eerie the fight was in comparison to a lot of just the like adrenaline pumping button mashing that a lot of the other boss fights devolve into, where they're just spamming you with attack after attack. A lot of what the Ancestor Spirit does is very telegraphed, it's very easy to follow, and there's this eerie music that plays in the background, and it's just a real experience. I was a big fan of that. And then, for our third boss, is in my opinion probably the easiest boss in the game, and that is Renala, Queen of the Full Moon. Now this is a story-related boss, so sorry if you haven't got to this point, because spoilers I guess. That said, giving you no context outside of the fight itself, what I liked about Renala is that this fight subverted my expectations in basically every way possible. Renala is kind of the head of like this sorcery academy where there's a lot of magic being used. So you go into this fight expecting to fight some super crazy sorcerer, and what you get instead is this very mechanical fight as opposed to a lot of magic happening. So for Renala, there's two phases, and in the first phase, you have to attack her little drones, for lack of a better word, but these little guys on the floor here. There is always one of them glowing gold at any one time. You have to go smack the ones that are glowing gold three times until she falls, and then you can attack Renala. She does not attack you back, and you'll do this a couple times for phase one. And then it switches to phase two, where she's actually fighting you in full force, using a lot of her sorcery and stuff, but honestly... Even this really isn't that hard. Again, one of the easier fights, but it does take place in this really cool arena with the full moon in the background. And again, in my opinion, Renala is one of the easiest boss fights in the game because realistically, the only way you would struggle with this fight is if you were trying to fight her purely as someone using sorcery, as she is very resistant to magic. However, she is very susceptible to physical damage, especially the bleed effect. So even if you are a sorcerer with like 10 strength, you can literally just go pick up any old bleed weapon and just absolutely massacre this poor woman. And then in our second spot, we have a bit of an odd one, I imagine, but it is the Draconic Tree Sentinel. Now you'll fight a few tree sentinels throughout the game, actually. However, there's only the one Draconic Tree Sentinel. He shares a lot of the move set with the regular Tree Sentinel, sure, but he also has the added bits of his horse can breathe fireballs at you, and he can actually call down lightning as well, like a lot of the dragons in game can. And while this fight can certainly be challenging, what really stood out to me most was just the very unique enemy in that, again, you don't see a lot of horses shooting fireballs at you, for instance but also just the fact that it largely kind of turns into this jousting match with a fire-breathing horse and a rider with this really cool shield, a shield you get if you beat the guy. And overall, it was just a really cool fight that I enjoyed a lot. And then last but not least, these were in no particular order, by the way, so 
the fact that this one is first doesn't really mean that much, but it is nonetheless the Mimic tier. So the Mimic tier is one of the optional bosses in the game, and as its name would imply, it is just a Mimic. It's you. The Mimic takes the place of whatever build you are working with. So whatever you've been doing, the Mimic tier will now do to you. So it's your kind of tropey doppelganger fight in a lot of ways, but I enjoyed it a lot just because if you've been running a super cheesy build and you run into the Mimic tier, guess what the Mimic tier is going to do to you? It's going to use those cheesy mechanics. And if that wasn't enough, this is the boss that awards the Mimic tier summon, which is, I would say, pretty unanimously considered the best of the best in terms of the summons available, as that summon just creates another copy of you that will absolutely massacre some bosses, kind of depending on your build, but in general, very strong if you upgrade it. But there you go, guys. Five bosses that are among my favorites in Elden Ring. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.